Recording in progress. All right, now let's go, Sharon. All right, well, again, welcome to the Zoom Rock Room. Having some technical issues here on uh, my computer tonight. And uh, there's some other issues that have been happening with my computer, too. So hopefully that will be rectified in another day or two. So uh, welcome aboard. Uh, I think we have some new people in the, in the room tonight that want to hear the program that's coming up about uh, South Mountain and the Frederick Valley. And as we usually have our little short introduction here, uh, the Zoom Rock Room, always sponsored by Lair Architect, out in Lake Havasu City, where it's been uh, really, really, really hot. And uh, Lair Architect at Yahoo.com, if you care to drop them a line to say thank you for uh, making all this possible. And of course, our friends at the Institute in Waynesboro, uh, they have a bunch of programs still going on as the fall season comes up. If you like birding, uh, they go out uh, on uh, birding excursions the first and third Saturday of each month. You can check out their website there for the schedule. And one of the big events coming up uh, sounds like it's a far, a far distance from now, but December 18th, their winter solstice celebration at uh, Red Run Park. Big event to welcome in the, the, uh, the winter solstice. And of course, our buddy Andrew Epic was just talking to us about the uh, Mohawk Valley, and uh, he supplies us some cool videos. And of course, he has his own YouTube video that you can uh, channel that you can go out and see all of his videos that he shot. Particularly this past weekend, he did a couple of videos from uh, Mohawk Valley as he was uh, taking advantage of the holiday weekend. So we thank him for all the. Uh, all the stuff that he does with the uh, Zoom Rock Room, Crystal Cove Collective, uh, up in Camp Hill, Pennsylvania. Uh, when we need prizes for our various uh, games that we do, contests, we call on them to supply us some some uh, minerals, fossils to give out. Uh, you want to check your muting again, please, if you would. Uh, get everybody muted. Maybe it's only three it. weeks away. It's time to start to advertise it to everybody. The Gem and Mineral Show at uh, Harrisburg, sponsored by the Central Pennsylvania Rock and Mineral Club. And that's coming up to September 24th and 25th at the uh, Harrisburg Consistory, which is right beside the, the Zembo. And uh, it's a great show. All the, uh, I understand all the, um, uh, Dealer spaces are sold out, according according to Brittany. So uh, it's going to be a full fledged, uh, full show this this year. And uh, anybody who wants to come to the show and participate in some uh, geology programs that that I'm doing that weekend, there's the listing. And we are going to be doing some painting for gold, uh, courtesy with uh, cooperation from Andrew's um, Gold Prospecting Group. We're actually going to be paying for some real gold. So, uh, anyway, there's the schedule for that. Uh, our schedule for Jones Geological Services, uh, Saturday morning, if not doing anything, you're in the Millersville, Pennsylvania area. Uh, be doing the uh, mining history in Lancaster County at some ungodly hour at 9 o'clock in the morning. But we'll, we'll make it through. Uh, September 20th is the Dinosaurs of Southeast Pennsylvania. Um, at the Ali uh, Penn State York campus for the senior citizens. And not to, not to confuse you, but uh, also September 20th, which is our next Zoom Rock Room, uh, Steve Lindbergh is actually going to be your host. And he will be uh, uh, doing the program at night, too. I won't be here. I'll be uh, doing the geology and the Gaysbury campaign for a special group. Um, so uh, Steve will be taking over that night. Thank you for that. And October 1st, it's a Saturday, a uh, dual program up at Sweet Arrow Lake in Pine Grove, Pennsylvania. Earthquakes and volcanoes at 3 o'clock. And at 7.30, weather permitting, we're going to do another astronomy night. 
at uh, Sweet Arrow Lake, which says, very dark skies. Do you want to make, make sure everybody's muted, please? All right. Thank you. In the Zoom Rock Room schedule, we have a great, uh, great lineup, I think, coming up this fall. As I said, Stephen will be uh, talking about his trip to Michigan uh, in two weeks. October 4th, there is no Zoom Rock Room. Uh, that's a vacation uh, time for us. October 18th, uh, I'm really excited to have Elizabeth Denshell coming in. She's the executive director of the uh, National Mining Hall of Fame and Museum out in, uh, out in Colorado. Uh, November 1st, Meadowcroft Rock Shelter with Jim Urey. He's going to be uh, talking about Meadowcroft and what the importance of that is. And November 15th, Ice Volcanoes in, in uh, Pennsylvania by Adam Ayano with the uh, Pennsylvania Geologic Survey. And we will uh, have a, a quiz night uh, on December 6th, although that might be all, that might be changed to the second uh, program in December. There's a possibility of having a, another special program that night by another speaker. And we're actually going into February now with speakers. We have uh, we have Vince uh, Santucci going to join us in February, who's the uh, National Park uh, Paleontologist. And he's going to be doing a program for you on paleontology within the National Parks way in February. So uh, anyway, that's the uh, schedule. A uh, reminder, February, February, <laughs> September 18th. Uh, the Greenwood Furnace, I will be honest with you at this point, uh, there's very few people signed up for it. Uh, so this may not happen on the 18th, which is uh, basically a week and almost a week and a half away. Uh, so um, I will send out a notice late this week or yay or nay of that. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. So you know, I got, you know, I got up thinking this morning about something. I wondered uh, if you dress in cowboy clothes, are you ranch dressing? That's that's what I want to figure out there. Okay. So, so again, you want to, everybody want to mute yourself, please, and. Uh, yes. Yeah, Cynthia Smythe, can you please mute everything coming from you? Uh, Let me check to see. Uh, Sorry, Jerry, I've tried messaging him. Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just muting my, I'm just muting, uh, some people now. All right. Um, got up in the morning at five o'clock. Took a three-mile walk. Came back. Had pancakes and eggs for breakfast. And I don't remember the rest of the dream. So, anybody, ever, anybody ever have a dream like that? <laughs> All right. So we're going to move on here. Um, Change back to, uh... okay, so tonight's program, I'm going to bring it up here to you. Nice, nice program, but actually when it's gotten delayed a couple times because of uh, speakers wanting to come in and do programs, and I just kind of gave them that night. So uh, I guess after some of my computer issues I've had, we're still going to get this done. So, so uh, a short geologic history and mineral resources of South Mountain, and this is Pennsylvania and Maryland, and the Frederick Valley in uh, in Maryland, obviously. This is actually actually a um, this is actually a part of a, a field trip we did for the uh, at that time the Rent Rent Trail Institute in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. We did this tour. Yeah, 
Yeah, I gotta find that. Person that's making all the noise here. Uh, uh. Oh. How did we get here? Did, did you ever ask yourself that question? Our parents, right, got us here. So, uh, all right. A little basic background for people that, you know, we've gone through this before, and uh, it's always good to have a review sometimes of some basics before we actually take our little tour. And uh, the geologic time, first of all, uh, time scale based on uh, really the fossil record of uh, what animals lived earlier or when. Uh, for example, uh, Stephen Lindbergh was talking about the Swatara Gap at the Nordavision period. And uh, one of our favorite sites at New Ringgold is the Devonian period up in here. But uh, basically, uh, basically this geologic time scale is set up based on uh, animal life in the past. And I'll be talking a little bit about some of the ages of, of these rocks that we will encounter in South Mountain and uh, the Frederick Valley. Alfred Wagner also is the uh, person that uh, uh, developed the continental drift theory, which is now called plate tectonics. We'll talk a little bit about that because uh, there's several plate tectonic things that did uh, occur to make South Mountain and Frederick Valley exist. And of course, our world has changed over the millions of years. If you do any of the uh, do any of the videos searching for the geologic history, the animation that they have out now is really incredible of how our Earth has uh, changed appearance. <coughs> and on the East Coast, um, our geologic history is. Uh, full of different events. For example, a billion years ago, one billion with a B, uh, we had Rodinia as a supercontinent, pretty much uh, down around the South Pole region. We were a part of Rodinia, which uh, eventually did break up. And there that is happening, uh, happening in the, uh, the uh, Cambrian period and actually back in the uh, the, the Protozoic period. Next, we had the uh, building of an uh, ocean known as the Iapetus Ocean and the uh, building of the continental shelf off the east coast of ancient North America. We had uh, some volcanic islands uh, occur off of our east coast at some miles off the coast that eventually did collide with our east coast and is now part of a uh, Eastern Maryland, Delaware, and actually up and down the whole eastern seaboard from Newfoundland down into uh, actually uh, uh, sub subterranean of Florida. And then we had the collision with Africa, North America, Asia to form Pangaea. That did break apart into kind of the world that we know of today. And we had extensive weathering and erosion taking place uh, where we actually, in some places, we know we lost three to four miles of crust over our heads uh, through uh, weathering and erosion. And last but not least, the Ice Age uh, lost some down a lot of waters uh, down the Susquehanna River and uh, did a lot of erosion at that point, too. So that's kind of a quick uh, survey of the uh, of our geologic history. Keep that in mind because we're going to hit on a couple things tonight. We're going to actually see a piece of Rodinia in our tour. And we are going to talk about how Pangaea uh, came together. South Mountain is actually uh, a rift valley of uh, the uh, split up of Rodinia. So at my mechanics uh, shop the other day, I saw this sign. 
this is a new pricing uh, post COVID. So a ping 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 costs you thirty five dollars. A plunk ping plunk fifty dollars. And a a clank thud and and crank is not really good. That's three hundred twenty five dollars. So that's how my mechanic is now pricing his work. All right, Rodinia. Supercontinent, <clears throat> one billion years ago, and it split apart uh, roughly 750 million years ago, and uh, you know back in the older days, uh, uh, Pangaea was the only supercontinent that was really mentioned in in literature. Uh, but since that time, with the technologies and all the research going on, there's now I think if you go on the internet and look at past supercontinents, I believe there's now like uh, six or seven, uh, you know, four or five more before Rodinia now that existed someplace on Earth. So if you see where uh, <coughs> Laurentia is right here, that is us. Okay, and this is during the breakup of uh, Rodinia. Uh, was not the Pacific Atlantic Ocean. The Moravia Ocean was the uh, general ocean around. But in the Frederick Valley, just south of Middletown or Middletown Road, uh, very close to the uh, to where the Middletown Road goes over uh, Route 340, 15 at that point, um, you can find an outcrop of the Middletown Nice. This is original crust of Rodinia. So if you want to collect the oldest rock that you probably are going to see, at least in our region, this is one of the places to go do it. Particularly if you're in the Maryland area. area. So that's the, road, that's the road cut on the right hand side. It's not, it's not uh, beautiful or anything, but it is one billion year old nice. So. Um, that's, that's pretty exciting. Uh, over the course of the geologic time, and again, uh, what's happening to our Earth today has been happening to our Earth for millions and actually billions of years. So I have this slide in here showing you the uh, what's called the Afar Triangle, the Red Sea, and the Gulf of Aden. This is a rifting apart going on between Saudi Arabia, Africa, and uh, one day the Red Sea will be called the Red Ocean because it will keep getting wider and wider. And in fact, what the other rift comes down into Africa, you'll see it down here. Uh, so there's actually always three arms to a rift. There's one, two, and three coming down through there. So modern day examples all ex exist of things that happened a long time ago. So here's a geological uh, map of a uh, the southeastern Pennsylvania region. Here is the South Mountain being represented on a geological map. South Mountain does belong to, it's actually a section, South Mountain section of the Ridge and Valley province that includes the Great Valley over here and of course the famous Appalachian Mountains. To the east of South Mountain we have the Gaysburg Newark Lowlands section which was a rift Valley during the breakup of Pangaea. So, if you can imagine, South Mountain, which you know, we're going to extend this into Maryland here soon, was a rift of Rodinia, and right next door we have the rift of Pangaea. Why did those two occur side by side? It's probably because the crust was weakened as the South Mountain Rift was taking place during the Rodinian time. So when Pangaea began to split apart into the world we know of today, it picked the, a, uh, the weakest zone of weakness and developed a, a, a rift right beside it. <coughs> so you now Blue Ridge Mountains, of course, are much fam more famous in Virginia, North Carolina, and Tennessee. Blue Ridge Parkway, and of course you have <coughs> you have the Cher you have Cherokee, North Carolina, and Asheville, North Carolina sitting in there. 
all, you know, so really the geology is very similar to what we're going to talk about tonight. <coughs> in Maryland, um, this is South Mountain in Pennsylvania, and in Maryland, though, South Mountain uh, proper splits into two ridges. I'm not sure if you ever knew that. But if you go across Route 40 or 15, 340 to Harper's Ferry, um, there's actually two ridges. The westernmost one is called South Mountain, the eastern most is called Contocton Mountain. And we have the Middletown Valley in the middle. This is where the um, billion year old gneiss is, is found. And the rest of this uh, out through here is the Piedmont. Uh, out to well to, to Baltimore and then we'll we're gonna stop there so the P minus actually about this area in through here so my important part here is that South Mountain does break into two arms in Maryland South Mountain to the west Kentucky Mountain to the east so here's a view of uh, Kentucky Mountain in uh, in Maryland Remember, why do we have uh, hills and valleys in uh, eastern eastern uh, United States uh, and the Midwest? Is actually because the uh, hard rocks underlie the higher elevations. Soft rocks make up the valleys. Hard rocks, I'm talking about volcanic rocks and a, metamor a metamorphic rock called quartzite. The valleys are made up of valleys made up of a uh, limestone and shale for the most part. So in South Mountain, and again I'm talking about uh, Kentucky Mountain, South Mountain, and South Mountain in Pennsylvania, the oldest rock that we know about that has been exposed is uh, a rock called uh, rhyolite, or actually called meta rhyolite. Meta means it's been altered by heat and pressure a little bit. So the minerals have changed just a, a little bit, but we call it metarhyolite. Okay, so what it kind of looks like, there's like seven different uh, types of rhyolite within South Mountain. Uh, you can actually uh, go from outcrop to outcrop and find it changing. Uh, d different colors, uh, different patterns. You can see flow patterns, whatever that. <coughs> In Pennsylvania, a place called Carball Run Reservoir, which is kind of south and a little bit east of Caledonia State Park, we have columnar jointing taking place. This is the only columnar jointing exposure in Pennsylvania. Uh, this is it, it tells geologists that this uh, lava, which is about you know about 570 600 million years old, uh, did encounter a water environment. When it uh, erupted, it, it flowed into it flowed into uh, an ocean, the Iapetus Ocean, and it created these uh, columnar joints, just like Devil's Tower, the famous Devil's Tower out in the west. It's all columnar joining, but there's uh, this one at the Carball Run. It's a good wintertime visit to uh, see this. Right now it's in a bunch of weeds and uh, little creepy crawlers on the ground that I don't like uh, sort of thing. Also the rhyolite was used for prehistoric tools. You've heard me talk about that before. When we talk about Carball Run uh, Preserve on the Michaud State Forest it was a site of prehistoric uh, quarrying for the rock. Some of the best uh, uh, flint mappable rock in Pennsylvania, other than a little, a little bit of jasper and uh, and chert that exists. So the uh, I call the prehistoric people uh, at least 8,000 years ago the first geologists. And if you want to ever visit the uh, the site, it is on Carball Run Preserve, which is as I said part of the Michaud State Forest. Uh, there is a a uh, district road that you'll see there in the south, in the bottom of the of the map. There is a parking lot uh, for Carball Run Preserve, and you have to take about a three-quarter of a mile walk on the trail. 
if you get to the Y intersection, uh, about a quarter of a mile back or so, uh, bear to the left and go up the hill, a little bit of a hill. And when you see the first the big outcrop of rhyolite on your right hand side, uh, kind of bear off the trail and head to the top of Snaggy Ridge. And out here you will see um, a chain of uh, pits. That's where they were quarrying the rhyolite. If you do follow Snaggy Ridge out to almost the end uh, of the Snaggy Ridge, you actually will find also the rock shelters. Uh, that there were rock shelters there that were temporarily uh, used for uh, prehistoric people to to uh, to stay in uh, while they were there quarrying the rock. Uh, so some of these are actually fairly large. Sometimes it's just hard to keep up with everything, though, isn't it? I gotta throw these in to keep you awake every now and then. The other volcanic rock is called Meta Basalt. Okay, and as it says here, uh, Meta Basalt is oceanic volcanoes. Now, Rhyolite, if you saw on my label back there, Rhyolite is a continental volcanic uh, activity. So during this rifting of Rodinia, there were two phases of volcanic activity. One was the continental rifting, and the salts telling us that they had also had oceanic rifting going on. So, uh, uh, which one came first? We don't know that answer. It's not been re resolved which rock is the oldest. Okay, there's evidence both ways. So that's, re that's really something within South Mountain that... Uh, that isn't quite yet known. But the piece I have here, uh, the green and the uh, orange color, green is Depidote, orange is the uh, Feldspar. These did fill in gas bubble voids. Uh, so some of the basalt itself is also spectacular. One, one company that's doing, uh, that's in the volcanics, uh, quarrying, is especially granules. That's in, that's in the Charmaine, Pennsylvania, right outside of a Blue Ridge Summit, only a couple miles north of the uh, Mason-Dixon line. And uh, especially granules used to be called ISP granules, but uh, they started about 90 years ago making granules for roofing shingles out of the, uh, mostly the, the, the uh, basalt. So today the uh, uh, especially granules owns 700 acres of land, about 140 employees. Uh, you'll see the uh, aerial uh, satellite photograph of the active quarry over here. And they are actually reclaiming some of the old quarry as they take ma uh, material out of the new quarry. Uh, some of the material is being actually used to um, fill in the, the old quarry. But it's a very large operation if you have ever seen it. Really hard to see from the road. Uh, you can see it from Route 16, uh, several points. If you go on Charmaine Road, you of course drive right past it, but you cannot see the, uh, the quarries from the road. You can just see the conveyor belts. Here's what the quarry looks like. Uh, right now they are permitted to go eight levels deep. If I counted this right, the, they're down to the, about the fifth level here, so they have three more levels, 150 feet to get to go down yet, uh, under their present permit. You kind of see the green. That's the meta basalt showing up. That's what they're pretty much looking for with their their granules. And they do have a lot of uh, about 12 feet of weathering uh, of soil to get through. As I said, they, they take out 600,000 tons a year to reclaim the old quarry. So, uh, pretty large operation. They do, <coughs> they're not letting groups come in yet as far as uh, visitors. They do not allow collecting there at all. Uh, but uh, if you go on, a, go on one of our, uh, our group tours, they're very happy to give you a piece of native copper that they find in the quarry on occasion. They actually have a couple 50-gallon drums sitting 
uh, behind a certain building full of uh, native copper. And but they they occasionally do hit the metal rhyolite. You see the red, uh, the metal basalts on top. The red is the metal rhyolite, and they have actually found use for this now. They they actually are using the red. Uh, they do crush the rhyolite for a crushed stone. So they just uh, about three years ago started the uh, the crushed stone business and selling that. So. You know, I said it before, if you're operating a quarry, everything that comes out of that quarry, you want money for. So in this, in, in their case, they have found the Rye Lake can be uh, used for crushed stone. And actually, you also will see the, sometimes, particularly around the Waynesboro area, you'll see, uh, you'll see the side of the road uh, covered with uh, green rock on the shoulders, and that's the basalt. So, uh, they have three plants to process the granules. Uh, the last I talked to them, they had like 17 different colors of granules uh, that, they, that, that the basalt's being actually uh, uh, dyed and put into furnaces to, uh, to uh, make the, the dye stay on it. Uh, a long process of uh, conveyors to get the job done. Three quarters of miles of conveyors and they ship about 600,000 tons of granules a year. Most of it by, by the truck and the tanker trucks. So, they are also a wildlife refuge. Um, you know, quarries get a sore, get a bad mark because of what they're doing with taking rock out of the ground. And even up here at, uh, at uh, Charmaine, which is not a heavily populated area, uh, residents still do get uh, uh, nervous about what is happening at the quarry. But uh, they're actually a wildlife refuge. Every time I go up there, you can always see some kind of wildlife. And they, of course, have a weather station uh, to monitor the conditions. Also in the same area, and uh, not so much in Maryland, but most of this was happening in Pennsylvania, the native copper. Uh, is right in the neighborhood of, uh, of Charmaine and of course there is a copper run this used to be uh, part of the PH Gladfelder uh, Pulpwood Company in Spring Grove, Pennsylvania had a tree farm in, a, in all, most of this acreage but uh, they did a land swap with the state with the uh, state forest so now it's the Michaud State Forest owns the uh, property that has most of the uh, old copper mines on it there's a sample of it down in the bottom. In the uh, 1800s, this was, this was one of the leading copper districts in the, in the country. And the Reed Hill Mine is uh, the only mine that still has a, um, use this word, accessible uh, mine shafts. Uh, these are not deep at all. They're only actually about 30 feet deep, but uh, they are accessible. There is actually a gated um, copper mine shaft on the property of of the uh, of the granules quarry uh, up behind their office. Uh, so as far as going collecting copper again, this is a uh, now our state forest land, which does does not permit collecting at all. Plus the uh, the collecting is not really good uh, much anymore. Silver. Well, is there silver in South Mountain? Uh, there's copper. Why can't there be silver? Well, there could be, but we have never found any natural silver in uh, South Mountain. Uh, not that it can occur, and there's been rumors that it, ha it has been found uh, by uh, one certain person in several places. This one, though, is kind of an interesting story I'd like to share with you, where a... Um, a person who was writing a history book about South Mountain, not the GIB. He was only looking for the, the history of South Mountain. They, uh, they found a rock down around Mount Alto, uh, which is on the western side of South Mountain, uh, below Caledonia and north of Waynesboro. Anyway, they, uh, they took this picture and sent it to me and said, we found this silver wire on this rock. 
and uh, yeah, it's silver, all right, okay, and uh, hmm, very interesting, uh, very possible. So I made arrangements to meet the two on the left-hand side. Uh, this is the guy that's writing the book, and this is his friend. This is Mr. Joe Dagg, who's a expert on the history of minerals of Pennsylvania. Lives in Chambersburg, and uh, if you know anything about South Mountain, it's him. So they took they took us to this rock that had the silver on it. Now, first of all, silver will only occur in in a volcanic rock, like mostly basalt. We got to this area. We saw that this rock is not basalt. It's a it's called a quartzite, which is a metamorphic uh, sandstone. And right away, I knew that it could not be native. What Joe's telling them there, based on where that rock is sitting right now, in the middle of a Jeep trail, he's telling them that a vehicle came up the road at one time, scraped its bottom on that rock, deposited silver off the off the uh, frame of the car or jeep whatever it was because there is actually silver alloyed in a in a auto chassis and he's telling them that that silver did recrystallize into what well, it showed you but it's not natural so it kind of busted their bubble uh, sort of thing so uh anyway uh no, a mineral that does occur in south mountain uh, Maryland and Pennsylvania is a specular hematite, the shiny black there. It was actually mined for iron ore, uh, mostly on the kind of the eastern side of uh, South Mountain, again, both within Pennsylvania and Maryland. Now, geologists, you know, we, we, uh, we're, we're friends as long as we understand and uh, agree with each other's theories. But sometimes at 3 o'clock in the morning, I get a I get a, a theory in my head, or an extension of a theory, and uh, I uh, I have an extension, and then I, I will tell Roxanne my my new idea, and she may not like it, and she will want to drop a rock on my head, uh, disapproving of my theory. Another uh, iron ore that was mined uh, is called ghostite. This is an iron ore. Again, both in the now on the western side of South Mountain in Pennsylvania and Maryland, um, is this ghostite. There's a number of uh, iron mines, iron banks, as they were called, uh, lining the uh, western slope of South Mountain. Uh, pretty low grade type of iron, but it was actually you know doable in the 1800s to to put into furnaces and and help make iron. This was actually from the Point of Rocks in Maryland along the uh, Potomac River, which is in, I regard, the uh, close to the Frederick Valley. And we want to introduce you, of course, to the furnaces. That was its own industry uh, sort of thing. A furnace, uh, of course, processed the iron, made iron implements, skillets, cannonballs, cannons, uh, stove plates, anything iron back in the uh, late 1700s, 1800s. And there were three ingredients needed for uh, uh, for the production of iron. First of all, you need the iron ore. You use limestone as a flux material, which means limestone was getting rid of the impurities and having that float to the top of the furnace, where you would actually skim that off, and that would become slag. And uh, the early days, it was charcoal heated. Uh, later, when the coal was was uh, introduced into this uh, uh, industry. They did use coal, but originally it was charcoal, so we, they had to uh, deforest a lot of acreage of woods to make charcoal. So this is an example of what maybe a setup was. They had a um, an overshot or an undershot water wheel that would turn and operate the, the turret to uh, to blow the air into the furnace to, to get the charcoal uh, uh, burning well. Of course, then you add, the, add your limestone and iron ore. And to make the charcoal, 
it looked like this. They took like a, an acre of, of wood and they would TP it up like this and, the, and they would actually then cover it with dirt and they would light it so that it would not burn but it would smolder. And in that 10 to 12 day process of making charcoal just from this pile, if the fire broke through the dirt, you had to climb the pile like the gentleman on top that, uh, is standing and take dirt and clog it up. So you had to be there 24 hours a day uh, to make sure that does not happen. So these uh, charcoal terraces, as I call them, uh, were scattered all over and through South Mountain, uh, wh wherever there were furnaces. And uh, this is its own crew. It takes 10 to 12 days to make one acre of charcoal and a furnace that was working very well use that acre of wood charcoal up in 24 hours. So uh, the example I have here is not within our region. It's over Middle Creek Wildlife Refuge in uh, Lancaster and Lebanon counties where they did make the charcoal as, as we show you there. In Maryland there is a pretty famous uh, furnace that's been uh, restored and actually they have a, a great trail there that you can actually walk and and give yourself a tour called the Contoctin Furnace. It's actually right off of Route 15. Uh, kind of actually when you drive down 15 you kind of go through the the middle of the complex. You don't know it but uh, there's a parking lot on both sides of 15. It was in operation from 1774 to 1867. So like 93 years or so in operation. Uh, the Iron Master's house uh, still stands and this is of course where the boss lived on the property so he could actually uh, oversee the employees make sure nobody was goofing off all right so a little geologic history uh, of course a billion years ago we talked about Rodinia and now working up into the geologic time scale into this Cambrian period 540 million years ago the dark green that is us Laurentia, we have broken away from uh, Rodinia, and we are we are floating, we are drifting north. Uh, not quite at the equator at this point in time, but we were surrounded by water uh, called the uh, most of it the Iapetus Ocean. You might also see re reference to a Arenic Sea, that was a section of uh, the Iapetus, and during that time. This is when the continental shelf was starting to be built. Remember on my earlier slide I showed you the continental shelf being built? Now this is going on in, within South Mountain area. Okay, after the volcanic activity was over, uh, now we have a building of the continental shelf and one animal fossil that we find only in South Mountain. Uh, this, this is the only fossil found in South Mountain. It's called scolithus, worm tubes. Okay, and these are the burrows of an ancient marine worm, we think. And uh, these are dating tools. When you, in a rock that you find scolithus, you uh, can date that rock to about 540 million years old. Um, so within the formation in South Mountain called the Antietam Formation, uh, particularly, uh, they are full of worm tubes. So if you want to find yourself a worm tube, find the Antietam Formation, mostly on the western side of South Mountain, um, Maryland and Pennsylvania, and you'll find these, uh, these uh, tubes. Really interesting, some of the oldest fossils that you'll find in Pennsylvania. A uh, spot I want to highlight too, down in Maryland on, uh, on the western slope of uh, South Mountain, on top of the mountain, Washington uh, Monument State Park. Uh, my wife's family uh, is from Boonesboro, which is right over, the, right over the side of the mountain, basically. And when they took my wife to uh, Washington Monument State Park as a kid, she called the <coughs> monument the milk bottle. 
So she introduced me to the milk bottle um, a few years ago. And it is made of a rock called quartzite, as I mentioned earlier. It is a metamorphic uh, sandstone. It's the native rock found on top of uh, South Mountain. Actually, uh, pretty, pretty abundantly throughout the uh, South Mountain. The higher elevations are usually a quartz site. So, and actually, if you look really carefully here, you'll see layering in the rock going this way, and layering in the rock over here going this way. This is called cross bedding. This is a feature that happens when we have two directions of of a current, like at the beach flowing up onto the beach in two different directions, we get this effect called cross bedding. And that's a pretty prominent uh, feature within this uh, particular quartzite formation. So if you've never been to the Washington Monument State Park, it's pretty neat. And of course there's various places on the western edge of South Mountain in Pennsylvania and Maryland. Um, I believe this is actually from Penmore Park uh, above Waynesboro on South Mountain. And you're looking over the Great Valley, which is predominantly limestone, dolomite, and a little bit of shale way out in the western end of the uh, valley. But this is where, of course, Interstate 81 runs. Uh, so again, when you drive Interstate 81, you're pretty much driving in, in uh, only several limestone formations the whole way uh, through the Great Valley from say Allentown uh, down actually into uh, Virginia and Tennessee near near Bristol but again soft rocks in the valley hard rocks are in the are in, are in the mountain all right move up a little bit younger in our geologic uh, period our geologic trip here uh, during the Middle Ordovician period, that's the period above the Cambrian, uh, you can uh, see the cross section. Here's the equator, Laurentia. We're very, very, we're essentially on the equator. And here's the Iapetus Ocean. Here's the volcanic islands that have developed uh, through to uh, what we call a subduction zone where a plate has gone beneath another plate. We've gotten <coughs> volcanic <coughs> islands. Uh, forming and then out in the further out in the ocean we have these pieces of crust that seem to have just gotten like lost don't belong to anybody particular as far as big continents and of course eventually uh Kungwana, uh squeezed this together first of all the volcanic islands did collide with eastern north america to create a big uh geologic we call them uh, um, um e e events basically Okay, Orogenes, and then later on, Kungwana, which is Africa, uh, South America came together and, and helped form Pangaea. So over, over uh, millions of years, it took all this to, to form. And looking at Maryland here a little bit, uh, Blue Ridge, Maryland, Maryland still re regards South Mountain as its own province. As I said earlier, Pennsylvania, we have the South Mountain section of the Ridge and Valley. But once you cross the Maryland line, you have to remember that the Blue Ridge province is is its own province in Maryland. But here's the Piedmont, uh, the upland, the lowlands section and the uplands. Within the lowlands section, uh, we have the lime, we have the limestone valley on the eastern side and right beside the Blue Ridge, just like Pennsylvania, we have that uh, Pangean Rift that uh, we call in Pennsylvania the Gettysburg Newark section. That was a, uh, a rift valley. I'm going to show you rocks from that area coming up soon. So in the limestone area on the western side of the lowland section in Maryland, uh, we have limestone and Vulcan Materials Company has taken advantage of it. Uh, at Bucky's Town, which is, uh, what, 10 miles south of Frederick, the Vulcan the materials does operate a quarry where they're using the rock for uh, industrial and road use. And uh, basically the, uh, the quarry is running what we call strike with the formations, mostly the Frederick formation. Different members 
uh, of the Frederick Formation. In other, in other words, there's distinctive uh, rock types that are different. Where the uh, the local geologist for Vulcan has uh, been able to come up with a the Rocky Springs member and the Adamstown member and the lime lime kiln uh, member. And off to the eastern side of the quarry, we have the the Grove uh, Formation. Again, still limestones, but they're mostly uh, really interested in this in the, the Frederick Formation for what they're using their limestone for. So this is what it kind of looks like today. Uh, an older part of, of the uh, quarry is uh, a you know has, has water. Um, of course, the, the quarry that's being worked today, right behind me as I took this picture, uh, is uh, of course is not water filled. All right, so Orogenes, the mountain building. This is what made a big jumble out of everything. Okay, where it was called the Allegheny and Orogeny. Allegheny and Orogeny again. Orogeny is a mountain building process, and uh, the Allegheny is actually divided into several smaller orogenies that affected these rocks, the, uh, the uh, Acadian orogeny, Taconic orogeny, and, 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 the, and the Allegheny. Okay, in the old days they used to call all this the Appalachian orogeny because that's just how the Appalachian Mountains were formed. But you basically see a general picture here. Africa uh, got thrown up and over North America or Laurentia in this case, and a lot of faulting taking place. This is a very simplified drawing of of our crust. If we could cut it and pull it up and show it to you. South Mountain, in, a, in effect, uh, went under different uh, stresses and flexes, as this diagram uh, talks about. And you keep adding pressure to it. Now we start to get folding that we call these anticlines and synclines. And now we have broken anticlines and synclines where things have pushed. And finally, this is what the South Mountain would look like today if you would pick it up from the side and pull it up. Where we have uh, basically the general shape of the whole thing is an anticline. We call that an anticlinorium. Uh, and it's, it's faulted, it's broken at different places. It is overturned. See how it's overturned compared to down here? It's pushed an up and over. And that's what South Mountain would look like if we were able to do that. So and I showed you this before for the veteran people of the uh, room. Um, this is South Mountain. Here's where it breaks into two. South Mountain and Kentucky Mountain here in Maryland, but uh, in here can you see a geologic fault? Right there. See how the west side is shifted about three miles to the left compared to the south side. This is Chambersburg and Gettysburg is right over here and this is Route 30 running right through where Caledonia State Park is. So right there is a major fault it's called the Carball Marsh Creek Fault that has displaced. And the people that have heard me talk before, you know that this is an avenue right here that the Confederates coming up the Great Valley heading to Carlisle and Harrisburg, uh, hearing about the turmoil over in Gettysburg, were able to use that gap to get through to get to Gettysburg. Okay, within South Mountain again in Pennsylvania, a place called Jack's Mountain Tunnel. Uh, right here is a geologic fault, where in this case the the uh, quartzite is thrown up and over the meta basalt. Uh, this is a great geologic uh, tunnel. Unfortunately, CSX doesn't let uh, us take groups back anymore because of insurance. But this is a great uh, exposure. The tunnel itself is really cool. On the other end of the tunnel, you'll see the quartzite all folded. You try to follow these layers, and they just get all disrupted all through here. So, um, 
a great lab, but uh, we just don't have very good cooperation right now from uh, CSX Railroad to take groups back there. So a lot of folding and uh, faulting within South Mountain going on. So this is from New York County. Uh, this is actually called the Pigeon Hills. If you know York County at all, we have two highlands in York County. One near Hanover is called Pigeon Hills, and the one near Helm is the Helm Hills. The geology of these two hills is nothing like we have elsewhere in, the, in York County. It actually looks like a part of the South Mountain that got broken apart. And so using my little schematic here, this is a theory that I, I didn't come up with, by the way. Uh, geologists came up with it in 1993, I believe it was, that near Jacks Mountain, uh, there was some uh, uh, two, two slabs of crust got broken away. So here goes the, here's the, uh, here goes the Helm Hills piece sliding to its present day position over the limestone valley and the Pigeon Hills moving to its present day from South Mountain over in Adams County. Uh, so if that is true, there is a major uh, fault under the green here and uh, within our limestone uh, valley area. So that's, that's only a theory. But that does explain how we get South Mountain rocks in your county that don't really belong there. All right, so I was talking about all the erogenies. Okay, so here's the volcanic islands, arcs down here, colliding, that produced the taconic erogeny. Uh, up in New England primarily, they had a collision with uh, the Avonian uh, terrain, which is a piece of crust colliding with North, uh, mostly New England, called the Acadian erogeny. And then we get into uh, the <coughs> time period, Mississippi and Pennsylvania and Permian, where Africa and North America come together to form Pangaea. And that's what did a lot of our destruction of our rocks. Folded, faulted, and all that. And we <coughs> came out with Pangaea. Ever have tried to, two kids hold a moon? Try that sometimes. So here's Pangaea. Again, we in uh, now North America, uh, existing about 300 million years ago, and and the, the Atlantic Ocean is actually starting to to split apart uh, 300 million years ago, 180 million years ago. Again, now the Atlantic, you see the separation between South America, Africa, and and North America. The Atlantic is just being born as we are rifting apart. And again, these rifts, remember I showed you the, the Gaysburg and Newark section rift coming right through uh, southeastern Pennsylvania and goes down into Maryland uh, below Frederick. And there's actually rifts, that, uh, basins um, the whole way down actually into Alabama, as you see on my left slide. So there's a tearing apart of, just like the Red Sea is going on today. And what happened, what? Uh, 600 million, million years earlier to Rodinia. So in these rift valleys, uh, it was a tropical climate. We had lots of rainfall. Uh, there was some, uh, a little bit of iron, the sandstone shale and some limestone uh, being deposited within the rift valley. The rift valley did have steep walls to it. So streams were carrying all the sediment in and when the sediment was actually not underwater, it was being weathered by the sun, and the iron was being oxidized to give it the reddish color. That's what we call the dip of the rock, the angle that the rock is tilted into the earth, which has uh, been very little disturbed since it's uh, since it got laid down, you know, roughly 200, 200 million years ago. The dips are gently to the North and northwest, like 10 to 10 to 30 degrees. They've not been deformed at all because we've not had any uh, erogenies. Gettysburg, uh, the battlefield, 
uh, gives you a good sequence where we have the sandstone and shale there. Or over here we have a igneous rock called diabase. And in between, this rock has been this rock used to look like this rock, but it's been baked, and it's now called a Hornfels. A lot of cases we've had uh, large iron deposits formed by that method. For example, with the Cornwall Iron Mines in Lebanon County. Back to Maryland again. Our, uh, if I get this right, Bollinger Bollinger Creek uh, Road. Uh, south of Frederick, north of, uh, north of, uh, oh yeah, lost the name of the town. <laughs> uh, but there's a, uh, there's a cut right off the road at the, uh, at the uh, sub electric substation of a rock that has a lot of fragments in it. It's called the Potomac Marble. This is Triassic in age. This was laid down during the rifting of Pangaea. And this just shows you what was going on. All these rocks are angular in shape, so they're not, they were not uh, transported too far in water. They, you know, they're angular, so they haven't been rounded at all. Most of the particles are actually limestone from the neighboring limestone valley just to the east of here. And they got laid down in the sand and glued together. And this rock is uh, called a breccia which is a sedimentary rock made up of angular fragments. I could go a little bit further on details how it was formed, but I don't want to confuse you anymore. And this rock, Potomac Marble, is used in the National Capitol building in the, uh, stat the Hall of Statues. If you ever take the uh, new uh, Capitol tour, uh, go into the Hall of Statues where you spend a lot of time, look at the columns. That's where the rock was taken from, uh, the, the, the uh, last photograph, to make, this, make these columns here. You can also find petrified wood in the uh, Triassic, the Mesozoic uh, region. And go a little bit further, again, you've seen the bridge on the Gettysburg Battlefield on Confederate Avenue um, that has the dinosaur footprints on it from... Uh, uh, quarry in Adams County. I'm not sure if this road is open now with the restoration going on at Little Round Top or not. This was a slab of uh, rock found at the uh, at the Fairfield Quarry in, in uh, Adams County, Pennsylvania with dinosaur footprints on. All these, uh, these are all footprints. Mineral wise, uh, place called Liberty Town in Maryland. Uh, you can find azurite and malachite along with other minerals. Uh, it did actually uh, mine copper at Liberty Town, which is out in the, uh, the, the Triassic area. And where you find, uh, where you find these uh, the Rift Valley of, uh, of Pangaea. Uh, you, you might be able to find gold. There's gold in many, many of the streams within the, where you find these, uh, the, what we call the red beds, the Mesozoic rocks, and diabase. Speaking of which, a little history and background, if you haven't heard me talk about it, the Reed Gold Mine in North Carolina, um, to, north of Charlotte, about 20 miles. This was the first commercial gold mine in uh, in the country, so uh, if you go down there it's, it's, it's today, it's a national, it's a North Carolina historical uh, uh, site, beautiful museum. They take you on a tour into the mine, and this is the creek where supposedly the first nugget found by a twelve-year-old Conrad Reed. So if you ever get to the Charlotte area, look up the Reed Gold Mine. 1802. Cornwall iron mines, I mentioned earlier, uh, the gold was discovered here in abundance. As a matter of fact, Bethlehem Steel had taken out gold out of the mine, processed it out of the, uh, the pyrite, and sold it to a company in Sunbury, Ontario, Canada, which uh, paid for all their operational expenses to remove 
their primary ore, iron. And speaking of gold in Maryland, uh, Maryland certainly had much more gold uh, resources than we had in Pennsylvania. And these are all gold mines, particularly along the Pot Potomac River, the Great Falls on the Potomac, uh, full of uh, gold mines that actually worked right up through uh, the 1920s. And if you're uh, acquainted with uh, these other locations, these are other places where gold has been uh, reported, including the Liberty Town uh, Copper. So the art of panning for gold, and I heard the conversation going on as I was trying to get into the room uh, about going panning for gold. Maybe that's a maybe that'd be a fun activity next summer to do. Uh, we're thinking about having a gold panning uh, event down in Spring Valley County Park where we used to have the gold panning. Uh, program when I, when I was still employed by the county. Teach you how to get down to the black sand and the gold. And this is kind of interesting, uh, Levi Strauss jeans were actually uh, developed. Levi Strauss made tents for the gold prospectors originally. And the prospector uh, told Levi Strauss, hey, your material for these tents. They make great jeans for our rugged work. So this pair of jeans sold for $46,000 on eBay. In South Mountain with the weathering, uh, we, had, we did not have the glaciers here, but we had uh, Hudson Bay climate here off and on. Uh, we we, had, we develop, developed what they call these, uh, these, uh, tail, these race courses. Um, where the rock was weathered and actually moved downstream by uh, by some water. This is called the Devil's Race Course, which is very close to the Merrill Line uh, in South Mountain in Pennsylvania. And if you're planning for the future, plate tectonic projections tell us that in another... Barry, excuse me, the slides are not advancing. Oh, they aren't? Not since Liberty Town, Maryland, and the Azure Uh Okay. Let me find that one there. You see that one now? Yes. Did you see? Did you see? Uh, which one did you see? This one. This one right there. Had, had you seen that one? No. Did you see the re gold mine? Yes. Yeah. Are they changing now? You see the change in slides now? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, so I'll just pick it up here. Uh, so there's the Devil's Race Course. If you have never been there, it's a neat place to go. Uh, right, 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 right off of uh, Fort Ritchie Road, um, officially in Franklin County, Pennsylvania. Weathering and erosion during the glacial period. And as I was concluding here, the uh, uh, plate tectonics will, will tell us that in 300 million years from now, maybe, uh, three to 500 million years, we'll, we're going to have another supercontinent called Amasia, which is uh, supposedly going to be around the North Pole, if everything goes right. So I will end with the... Uh, this is a space shuttle launch of John Glenn uh, that, we, uh, that we saw going up from Cape Kennedy. And we hope that the uh, new rocket will get up in the, into the air uh, sometime, hopefully now in October, I believe, is what they're talking about. So that's the end of my show tonight. Um, I hope you learned a little bit. 
as you see within South Mountain in the Frederick Valley, we have we have a, we have Rodinia, and we had the uh, rifting of Rodinia in South Mountain. We had the limestone uh, area with the uh, Connell Shelf, and then finally we had the Pangean. So from about the uh, Precambrian uh, Proterozoic period up through the Mesozoic period is covered within that region. So actually there is a guidebook on my website. If you go to jonesgeo.com and go to my field guides and find the one for South Mountain and Frederick Valley, you can actually take your own little tour and uh, visit those sites. So and we, we look at the chat, anybody have any questions or anything? Uh, <laughs> I'm doing a half pages of notes, okay. Yeah, Jerry, uh, <laughs> I've been to a lot of those places with you, and I thank you for that. Yeah, in fact, uh, in fact that was you holding the, the ghost light sample <laughs> with your gloved hand. <laughs> point of rock. Yeah, point of rock. So uh, this is going to be, uh, if, if our schedule goes right, this is my last program I'm going to do with probably... Uh, until about Christmas time at this point. So uh, we finally got South Mountain and the Frederick Valley in. But, uh, Jerry. Yes. Hey, uh, I'm just joining you guys tonight, but yep. uh, South Mountain recalls some of the field trips I took in college and my structural geology professor was really interested in a formation called the Swift Run Formation that supposedly I think occurred above the Catoctin, but you know, in that, is that still recognized or has that ever been resolved? Um, yeah, it is the first, uh, it's, it's the first non, non igneous rock above the Catoctin formation, all the volcanic. So it is still a recognized oh, yeah. Yeah. unit. Yep. But okay. it's, very, it's very, very thin. It's only like 200 feet thick. Okay. So to find it is kind of hard. We, we found, we found one, uh, one exposure of it, uh, for my, for my field trip this year at, uh, at the Institute in Waynesboro. We, we visited one down, uh, um, south of, uh, Tawny Town. We found, we found a very small outcrop of it. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was. A, we went there for structural geology field trips. And he was very interested in trying to piece together that stratigraphy and folding and right. pinpoint if that formation existed. So uh, thank you. Yeah, bigger outcrops of it if you go south uh, into uh, Virginia on the Skyline Drive. There's bigger road cuts of it. Okay. But uh, in Pennsylvania, Maryland, it's it's pretty hard. Okay. So. All right, if you're, if you're just joining us uh, for the first time, I remind you that these are being recorded and they'll be posted on uh, jonesgeo.com <coughs> under the Zoom Rock Room. Actually, later tonight, I'll, ha I'll have this done. And uh, if you do plan to go to uh, Greenwood Furnace, uh, let me know in the next couple of days, please. Uh, and I'm just trying to think. I've... Oh, yeah. I was going to tell you, I had a bad experience the other day. I stepped on a cornflake. Does that make me a, ser a serial killer? I'm watching her, but I have no, no, no way to react. All right, anyway, okay. Well, I think in two weeks, I didn't, didn't have a check to confirm with the, with with Steven here tonight, but Steven's going to be your host in two weeks from tonight, right, Steven? Yes, am I actually hosting that night, or you're are hosting, you going to be here? You hosted that night, I won't be here, my wife will will start the uh, video. Oh, okay, so, sounds good. So we can at least video it, but I'm going to send, I'll, I'll send you the intro stuff. All right. And, and you can change around however you want. Sounds good. It'll be all yours, so, uh, all right. Wait to see everybody again tonight, and uh, we'll put the gold pain gold pain uh, trip on our mind for next summer for you. So, uh, 
I see Larry, you have a couple of visitors around you there, welcome our kids. Good to see you. And Sorry, my granddaughter, Maya. Uh, hi, Maya. Good to hi. have you. Sorry, I didn't get to say hi to you when I was uh, trying to get everything straightened out here on my computer. <laughs> so. Hi, Maya. So, okay, we'll see you next time in two weeks. Be safe, everybody. Hi, Larry. Bye. Bye.